Welcome to the bonus part of the day. This part isn't mandatory for today's exercises, but it'll be useful for your career as a developer and for the rest of the bootcamp too. So earlier we talked about standard output. Actually, it isn't 100% accurate. There are two types of outputs, standard output and standard error. So using our favorite example, cat file.txt, everything went fine. The file's content is displayed on the standard output. However, if I try to do cat on a file that doesn't exist, it will display a message on the error output. Let's say I do a cat file.txt pipe space rev. The file is being displayed in reverse, which means the file's content has been displayed on the standard output. The pipes interpreted the standard output as the REV standard input, and the REV has done its job. However, if I do this on a file that doesn't exist, cat will display the error on the standard error channel. Rev won't read from the error channel as it only reads from the standard output, which is now its standard input, so the message won't be displayed. It can be interesting, or not. You may also reverse the error message if you want. How? By adding more redirections. If we want to redirect the standard error channels message and handle it as if it was a standard output, we'll do this. So 2 represents the standard errors output. 1 represents the standard output. We tell it that everything there is on the standard error channel and has to be treated as if it was a standard output. So if we add space pipe space rev we can see the message because it's been treated like a standard output. Identically we can direct everything that's in the standard error channel 2 into a file. For example if I do this I'm asking 2 to be redirected into error and keep everything that's in error. We can see our earlier error message and once again if we do this two to three times in a row it's only displayed once because it's been overwritten and there's a double redirection which will allow you to place your error message at the end of the file. All of this can be quite practical if you have a list of files containing error messages, but you want to keep only the part that worked, or only the part that didn't work, etc. Thanks to those redirections, you'll be able to gather all erroneous files into one error file. Something else that may be useful, a very special file, that isn't really a file, but oh well, it's called slash dev slash now. What is it? Basically, everything that's written towards dev null will simply be erased, forgotten. So here, nothing's going to happen. The dev null file doesn't exist. So nothing's been added to it, whatever. So what can you use it for? We can use it to delete a part and keep only error message, for example. If you want to display all error messages, it's a real mess. You need to go back up, check and stuff. If we tell it everything worked, redirect this towards dev now. And there you go. Display only error messages. So once again, this may be very practical for debugging or check whether your scripts work as they should. That's something very important to know for the future.